Hi guys and welcome back to the Cassie Projects. In today's video we are starting a brand new series and it is going to be Wreck This Journal. So you may have heard of this book, so you may have heard. If you have then I really hope that you enjoy my interpretation of this book. If you haven't it's very similar to my other video that I do which is create this book which is this one, which is a very similar principle. So it's a book full of prompts. This one is slightly different to some you may have seen on YouTube if you've seen it before. Uh, this is the colour version. I weren't sure what it was going to be like and I don't know if I regret that yet because obviously I'm going to put a lot of art into this. But it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult for me. Which, you yeah, know, might, might be a good thing. <laughs> Uh, this one is all about wrecking it, which I found really weird. After watching people's interpretation of the prompts, it's really interesting and I feel like I've got to really push myself in a creativeness to be able to not wreck it. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I don't want to wreck the journal, but I want to use the prompts um, to just inspire me to do different kind of art, things that I haven't done before. So yeah, I'm really excited to do this. I just, I really am looking forward to the challenge and doing something really quite different. I feel like I've really pushed myself over 2020 to do things that I wouldn't usually do and I think that this will challenge me to do that even more. Some of you requested this, here it is wreck this journal. This is the colour edition. As you can see there's lots of beautiful pretty colours throughout the book and also the front cover is a little bit different um, to some of the older ones and it's just brilliant. She's got two little holes there to um, cut out so you can spy on people and just the way she's written this book and just the little things in it is so entertaining. It's just brilliant. Now these pages I will slowly doodle on and decorate which will just be a bit of me time a bit of doodling a bit of fun um i've actually bookmarked these pages but first we need to crack that spine look away if you don't like seeing this but i can't really show you the pages unless we do that so that is the first prompt done and then i'm going to pretend to doodle on the back of this envelope now with this i just wanted to do some simple zentangles and make it look pretty then we've got use this as a test page so i was thinking i might swatch my windsor and newton watercolour palette which is fairly new uh, i got that for christmas and also i might if i've got some space to do it do my new gouache paint set as well um, and then the third page that i'm going to do in this episode is sew this page so let's get started with this page in my bullet journal i've been doing some planning yes that's right i've been using my bullet journal still using it so as you can see in this plan i've got a little teddy bear you know those stitch teddy bears that you can get and they've got all the stitching on the outside and they're looking a bit worse for wear and they've got like little bandages and little patches that's the sort of thing that i wanted to go for and then i'm going to do some actual stitching on the right page which i will show you what i'm going to be doing here is creating a pillow on the background i'm then adding some dots where i'm going to do the stitching on the left side i'm not going to put holes through it because i don't want to ruin the page on that side and i've just put a, a dirty old paint cloth underneath and i'm using a sharp pencil to uh, push holes into it so it will make it a little bit easier for me when i do the sewing extra so yeah on this page it's got glue a random newspaper here so that will cover up any of the stitching on the back side of that so let's get out my sewing box i've got to find a needle i found some wool but i was like it's a little bit thick and then i found an old embroidery kit which had a nice wide eye on the needle and also some lovely embroidery thread and I chose this green one because I thought it'd be quite contrasting with the orange so I go in and do a little bit of sewing which was very therapeutic <laughs> Thank you. 
So to stop this thread coming out, I've tied a knot on each end and then I've also taped that down because we don't want to lose that pretty little thread now, do we? So there you go, my gorgeous little bit of sewing all done. Now I'm just going to uh, pause there for a moment because my adorable little Layla wanted to show me some work and it was just so cute. And then this year I would like to get better at Sorry, writing. Very good. And there's someone writing on a board. And I said which colours are cards. Green envelope. Well, that's the awesome. Through, this one. Should we show the camera your amazing work? Yeah. Wow. My work. My your work. work. Working from home again, eh? Yeah. Okay, on to the left thread. So I've got my lovely organised acrylic paint box here. I've got acrylic paint, I've got acrylic paint pens, I've also got some oils in there as well. That's where I throw all my paints and <laughs> I'm using this very light green which is almost a yellowy colour and I just do lines on each of the thread and then I go round that with my dark green and leave that little bit of highlight in the middle and it worked perfectly. I was really proud of this. I even asked my husband and my mother to look at the thread and they both thought the left side was real. <laughs> Winning. Um, okay, issue with the book. I wanted to use my watercolour to add like a deeper red shade to the pillow so it looked, you know, different to the background. And the watercolour did not want to sit on this paper at all. There's, there's too much of a glossy sheen, which is a little bit of a problem for me. But I'm going to work around it. It did get there in the end, but... Yeah, water does not want to absorb on these coloured pages. I don't know if it will be different for the white ones, but yes, that was a little bit of an issue for me. And now I'm going to draw my lovely teddy bear. And I'm really proud of this. Again, I'm pushing myself to do different things that I wouldn't usually do. And I seem to be doing quite well at it, you know? Like, I keep surprising myself because I've never been good at, like, cartoony drawings. I never thought I was good at cartoony drawings, but I never really did it. And now I am doing it, I'm doing all right at it. So sometimes we've just got to try it out. I've also given him a little bit of a curl around the edges because I wanted him to look a bit fluffy and not so, you know, straight up and boring. Um, so yeah, he's got curly fur and lots of stitches and he really needs sewing up. He's um, not been looked after or been too well loved um, that is just falling apart. Now I have my lovely little teddy from when I was, uh, my first ever teddy from when I was born and it has got so many sewn up bits on there, it's hilarious. But I love looking back at it because the stitching is so bad because I attempted to do it when I was really little and I just think it's adorable. And then I'm going in with my lovely Windsor and Newton watercolours and using my uh, squirrel mop brushes, which I got from Jackson's Art. So let's get this teddy bear stuck into the book and in its rightful place. First I'm just going to chop it out and then I'm sticking it in with a bit of Pritt stick. I have to uh, fold a little line where it's going to sit in the crease of the book and I also have to chop off the end of his ear. Well I didn't have to chop off the end of his ear but I just felt that it was the right thing to do so sorry Mr Teddy Bear. <laughs> but uh, I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I think it looks really quite beautiful and I'm very proud of it. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's move on to pretend you are doodling on the back of an envelope while on the phone. So I'm sure everyone does this. Not that I ever really talk on the phone. I don't really enjoy talking on the phone. But if I do, I do often doodle on anything that I can see. But I wanted to try out Zentangles. I've seen these a few times and I often colour them in, in colouring books, like mindful colouring books. But I've never actually done any good ones myself. You know, I've done stupid doodling, but an actual good pattern. So I found some examples of Zentangles online and copied a few of them and I really enjoyed it. It was very therapeutic. I totally was lost in it. I weren't thinking and it was a really pleasant thing to do and I really enjoyed some of the patterns that I did. Um, the one on the lid of the envelope, is that what it's called? The lid of the envelope? But I did this quite unusual one and I really enjoyed the look of it so I also copied that onto the dark blue page and I used my new white jelly gel pen which is just fantastic. So yeah, this was really pleasant to do. So I've uh, finished doing the doodling and this idea came to me, it came to me, this idea and I was like I like this idea. Basically I turned over to the next page, it says journal golf, tear out this page, crumple into a ball, place journal into a triangle shape, hit kick the ball through the triangle. So basically this page is supposed to be teared out, teared out, torn out so this page is supposed to be taken out now it got me thinking because I want to be able to keep the pages even though I tear them out I want to be able to put it back in the book and I thought oh this is an envelope so what I want to do is cut open the envelope so that I can put this page inside the envelope does that make any sense at all well it will when we do it so that's what we're going to do now so first up I'm going to uh, chop the lid of the envelope that's what it's called now it's a lid of an envelope using my what's it called paper cutter knife craft knife using my craft knife then i needed to cut out the journal golf bit and then if you go to the back of the book she's got lots of spare pages with all the similar colors that are used throughout so i grabbed one of the same color and then i'm going to use that as the back of the envelope So what I decided to do was use some paper tape and I used the yellow inside to match the colour and then I ran out of the yellow which was really annoying. So then I used this black one which I think actually looked really nice and worked really well with the, the doodle design on the envelope. page I was just gonna make it quite simple do a normal swatch page do a bit of paint and then write its name beneath but obviously you you know how I like to make things more complicated and more difficult for myself so I had this idea coming up with all sorts of ideas today <laughs> I wanted to do like a uh, there's a word for this doing like a concertina fold piece of paper that has all the swatches on it which gives me more space on the page. Uh, again I'll just show you what I'm thinking because there's no point in trying to explain my thought process. But let's just try it straight up. Measuring, measuring, measuring. I'm going to do four centimetre folds. Okay. Okay, 
so you might be wondering what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm measuring out a big, massive grid. Each square is four centimetres by four centimetres. And then I cut a strip and put it into a concertina fold. This is then gonna sit in my book like so. It will have all the all the swatches of the different watercolours from my new palette. I need, try to neatly put all the names of the colours and their number on there so that I've got a nice little reference of all my watercolours. then um, evenly space out some squares and this is where the four little concertina folded swatches will sit. So when I put them down, I realised that they just reminded me of little alien legs. Like, I liked how boingy they were. So I was like, I've got to draw little aliens on them. It just had to be. So once I drew out my little aliens, two of them have got a palette. Uh, one's got a beret and a little French moustache. And another one's got a beret holding a piece of paper. And uh, yeah, so they're going to be stuck on the tops of these little alien legs because it just, just felt like it was right. another page now we've got plenty of space and this is why I wanted to do the concertina folded things just to give me a bit more space on this page so I went ahead and swatched out my gouache palette as well this one I did in a normal kind of process where you swatch out a swatch where you swatch out a little bit of colour and then write the name of the colour underneath so there you have it those are my three lovely wreck this journal pages I'm super proud of them and I'm really looking forward to doing another episode of this. I really enjoyed it. If like me you love getting creative, you like doing arts, crafts, even DIY, gardening, upcycling, whatever you like to do feel free to come on over to my Facebook group. It's called Cassie's Creativity Club. And basically we all share our artwork with one another and encourage each other to keep going and doing more. I also love sharing your artwork. This was posted in the group. Now she has painted this incredible picture on the beach. I just loved the thought of it, sitting on the beach, using the seawater to dip the paintbrush in and I just think it's absolutely fabulous and I feel like I'm there. Also, random comment of the week is from Voa Art and she's put, here's a question, is jelly gouache makes significant better result compared with tube gouache? I saw a lot from SNS nowadays, including you. So she's talking about my last video where I used the Himi jelly gouache paints and she wants to know if it's similar or not. I do not know the answer to this question because I haven't used tube gouache in such a long time that I can't really remember. But 
I have ordered some different branded gouache and I'm going to post a video very soon and give you the answer to that question. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week. Bye!